Alright guys, it's Hitwar here, the unnecessary programmer and welcome to my channel where we, you and me, optimize daily aspects of our lives that for sure don't need any optimization. Lately I've been in really romantic mood and I've been thinking it's about time to surprise my girlfriend with a romantic gesture. I'm a 90s kid and actually when we were little, we had two options to be romantic and to impress the girl we like. Option one, we had to create an extremely romantic mixtape compiling all the love songs of our day. Or option two, creating a huge wallpaper which includes a lot of photos from uh, some cool memories, some uh, places that you've been and uh, giving it um, to your babe. So, as the hopeless romantic I am, I've been thinking, it's 2020, let's up our game a little bit and create a Python script that will actually create a cool and smooth slideshow that will rotate on different pictures and play in the background a very romantic song. I know what you're thinking. Do you expect my girlfriend or boyfriend to know Python? And my answer is yes! Come on! What are you doing with a guy or a girl that doesn't know or doesn't have any basic understanding of Python? Up your game! Love requires sacrifices! They will learn how to run this Python script. Or probably not, but let's keep this over. That being said, let's surprise our loved ones with this romantic slideshow or more probably let's uh, creep them the <laughs> out yeah first thing we need are some cute pictures of you and your babe sadly my girlfriend is pretty shy and she blankly refused to take part in this video so i have somebody that is not very shy albus dumbledore are you going to take part in my video? Alright, I'll take that as a yes. So, here is the sexy guy that I'm going to create a cool love slideshow for. Nice! We start by creating two folders, music and pictures. In music you're going to add the song and in pictures you're going to add the pictures of you and the person uh, you are creating the gift for. Uh, today we are going to use uh, T Kinter for our graphical user interface. I will leave the documentation in the description if any of you are curious to read more about it because let's face it, we both know this won't be a deep dive into this technology and all the functionalities but rather a simple scratch on the surface. Of course, first we start by importing the needed libraries and then we declare the top level widget of TK, which usually is the main window of, an, of the application. We name the variable root and give the widget a cool title. Then we play the mp3 file we chose for our program, pass the second argument as false so you can play the music in the background. Next we are going to declare three images as variables and add them to the list. Of course, if you have more than three images, just add them to the list and the script will work just as well. In order to show the images, we are going to use the label class that takes images parameter in the constructor and place the label in the grid on row 0 and column 0, which means first row and first column. The column span is 3 because we are going to add 3 buttons below the photo. The 3 buttons are back, exit and forward. Because we are showing the first image, the back button is disabled. For the exit button, the command is exit the application and for the forward button, we are going to pass the forward method as onclick command. We will write in a bit the forward and back methods. Now let's place the buttons on the second row of the grid and finish with running the TK main loop. Next thing we need to do is write the forward function, which takes an image number as parameter. We are using the keyword global 
that allows us to access variables declared outside of the scope of the method. Then we clear the current image we are viewing from the grid and show the next image. Now, let's handle the on-click functionality of the back button and forward button. The back button needs to show the previous image when clicked, so we pass the back functionality to it with image number minus one. The forward button needs to either be disabled if we reach the final image or just show the image, the next image by incrementing the image number by one. Then we redraw the image and the buttons on the grid again. Pretty simple. The back functionality is mainly a copy paste of the forward uh, function. We just need to adjust actual, the actual e fails to be directed towards the back button. So we are ready for a quick test now. Why am I not surprised that I missed something? And it's not working. Yep. Let's fix the problem, which is I've passed the list element to the label without specifying we are setting the image. Now all will work as expected, I hope. And now, I was, I was, I was. Now the time has come. Albus is going to <laughs> apparently bite me, but not watch the slideshow. So, just press next and view the slideshow. Come on. Albus, do you. Apparently, he did not appreciate the slideshow that much. Oh well. Why are you running? Why are you running? Thank you everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And please leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Subscribe if you like the content. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye!